Hello and welcome to Searching the Scriptures, a daily podcast where Bible topics will be discussed and Bible questions will be given Bible answers. No opinion, just Bible. For today's episode, we will be looking at the topic of the home as God would have it. For those listening today, I must tell you that the home is under attack by our society and by our government. Society is looking to redefine what the home is and what marriage is. Marriage has always been between a man and a woman. It has never been between two men and two women until very recently in the last 15 to 20 years. It has not been accepted by society. Homosexuality has been present in society even from Bible days. But marriage has always been between a man and a woman because that is what God defined it as. And that's what man has always done. Very recently... Even in Ontario, our government is trying to change that. It's trying to tell children in school, as part of the curriculum, that they need to recognize that some people come from homes with two mummies or two daddies, and that's okay. Teaching children not to bully, teaching children not to discriminate, teaching children to treat others kindly is not wrong. Christians are told not to hate. We're told if we hate our brother, how can we say we love God? We don't love God if we hate our brother. And as we find out who is our brother, well, that's everyone around us. We are all brothers and sisters in humanity. Now, we might have brothers and sisters in Christ, but we do not hate anyone. But that's very different than teaching our children that we must accept as right, the homes that contain two daddies and two mommies. We are t- the children are going to be told that if you don't believe this, you are prejudiced. You are bigoted. And you are wrong. That's the problem with the curriculum that's about to be taught in Ontario. It's going to try to redefine the home and teach children that they have to accept that new definition, and that is wrong. The home was designed by God. It was not designed by man. Man can change it all he wants, but if he does, he is not acceptable to God anymore. He cannot uh, be a Christian and be part of a home that God did not design. So what is the home as God would have it? Well, first of all, at the head of the household is the man. The man, when he leaves father and mother, he cleaves to what? His wife. That's found in in, in Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, we're going to read verses 24 and 25. Genesis 2, verses 24 and 25. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. When man is going to be married to a woman, he is to leave father and mother. He is to cut the apron strings, as it is said. And that marriage to his wife is to take uh, priority over all other family relationships that he's had in the past. He is to cleave to his wife. The two are no longer two, but one. So they are to, the, the husband is to leave and to cleave to his wife. He, the husband is to love his wife. In Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5, we read verses 23 to 25. So Ephesians 5, verses 23 to 25. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. We are to love our wives if we are married, as Christ loved the church. How did Christ, how did Christ show his love for the church? He gave himself for it. He paid the ultimate sacrifice to save it. 
Husbands are to love their wives so deeply that they would protect their wives over anything else, even over themselves. They are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. They are to head the household. In verse 23 of Ephesians 5, for the husband is the head of the wife. This is something that really is objectionable to society today. How can the husband be the head of the wife? I want to be the head. Well, think about our body. What happens if the stomach wanted to be the brain? Leave its role in the digestion of food. It says, I want to be the brain. I want to think. The stomach wasn't made to do that. Same with the liver. Liver wants to be the stomach. Well, the liver, is uh, the, its purpose is to cleanse our bloodstream of of, of things that would be bad. But he wants to take the role of the stomach. He says the stomach is so much better. No. Each of our body parts has a role to play. And when it does not play that role, when something bad happens, our body gets sick. So it is with the family. Men are to be the head of the household. They need to accept this role. Women have an important role that we'll get to in a minute. Being the head of the household doesn't mean that everyone else under you is a slave. doesn't mean you do not have to listen to your wife. It doesn't mean that you're always right. But our body only has one head. Christ's church only has one head. It's Christ. Our family has only one head. One God-given head, and that is the husband. Moreover, the husband is to be the father. A man chooses responsibility when he chooses to be a father. The primary responsibility of child, uh, of child training rests with the father. That is not to say that the mother has none. The mother is told, uh, the children are told to obey their mother as well. Their mother can teach their children as well. But the primary responsibility of this is the father. In Ephesians chapter 6 Verses, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that that may be well with thee, and thou may live long on the earth. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That is what the role of a father is to his children, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. If the father doesn't take this responsibility up, then he is, then he is disrespecting what God has said. And his children will suffer for it. Men are to work. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8 reads, But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. The husband is to work. We're not talking about whether the wife can't work. The wife can work as well. But the husband is to work. We are not to be lazy. We are not to say, well, I don't feel like working anymore. No, that's not to be the attitude of the husband and the, the man in the household. Doesn't mean we have to have this expensive, uh, that we have to have this uh, job that makes us the most money. But we do have to work. That is what is God has given to us to do. So we are to love our wives, to be the head of the household, to be the father and to bring up children, and we are to work. What about the place of the woman? Well, the woman is to be the wife. In Genesis chapter 2, 18 to 24, Adam, all the animals were brought before Adam, and he couldn't find a helpmeet among any of them. So God caused him to go into a deep sleep, and from the rib of Adam, he created woman to be the helpmeet of Adam. She was the one suitable. She was to be the helper. She was to be his wife. Ephesians 2, 5, verses 22 to 24 says that she is subject to her husband. She is to be in subjection. She is not the leader of the household. She is not the leader. The husband is. The husband needs to take up that responsibility. But she has just as important a responsibility when it comes to the household. Turn to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 5. 
First Timothy chapter 5, uh, we're going to read verse 14. 1 Timothy 5, 14. I will therefore that younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. The husband is the head of the wife, but the wife is to guide the house. A guide makes sure that we stray neither left nor right. The husband has said we are going down this path, and a righteous husband will point us down the right path. The wife guides. The wife doesn't lead. The wife guides. In, uh, you can think of it this way. The pilot has said we are going here. And the wife steers it there. Make sure everyone gets there. The wife guides. A guide will go where they are told. The husband is the head, is the leader. The wife guides the house. Make sure everything gets done. Make sure everyone is in line. That's what the wife's responsibility is. The wife is to adorn herself modestly, 1 Timothy 2, verses 9 to 11. The husband is to adorn himself modestly too. But the woman is not to, be, to bring uh, attention to herself through immodest clothing, through uh, things that uh, should not be done. We are to be modest. We are to dress appropriately. And women are told this in 1 Timothy 2, 9 to 11. Women are to be teachers of good things. In Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2, uh, we're going to read verses 3 to 5. So Titus chapter 2, verses 3 to 5. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as be, uh, that they be in behavior as becomes holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers, uh, uh, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Aged women, older women, women in the household are to be teachers of good things. To who? to their children, to the younger women around them. Teaching is restricted. They aren't to usurp the authority of the man. They aren't teachers in, in the church. But that doesn't mean that they don't have a role. That doesn't mean that they're not important. They have a role. The most important role in one sense is to be a mother. It is said that the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Because when the mother teaches their children right, teaches their children how to behave, shows their children what it's like to be a wife, how to behave in this world, the mother's example will go to their children. On the other hand, if the mother despises her husband, doesn't uh, do what the Word of God says, that example will go to her children as well. A mother's influence is very important. Sometimes children are closer to their mother than their father. And that's why it is important that women do their role. Fathers need to do their role. Mothers need to do their role. If the home is to work as God would have it. And finally, the place of children in the home is not at the head. The place of children is to learn from their parents, to obey their parents. Ephesians 6 verses 1 to 3, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Promotes long life in this world. Doesn't guarantee it, but it promotes it. We are to hear our father's instructions and we are to hear our mother's instructions. And we are to obey them. We are to relieve needy parents when we are older and able to do that. 1 Timothy 5 verse 4 and 1 Timothy 5 16 tells us that. When we grow up and leave the home, we are not abandoning our parents. And we should never do that. Our parents took care of us when we were younger. If our parents are in need, we need to take care of them when they are older. God has set up the home when every part of that household 
works together to glorify God, it is a place where love and truth abide. And it is an example to this world who lives in sin. Let every one of us try to have a home like the scriptures teach. Let's not redefine it to accept what the world and society tells us we have to accept. We obey God. We don't obey men. If you are not a Christian, the brethren here in Toronto would love to study the Bible with you so that you can hear the word of God, believe it, and obey it before it is everlastingly too late. If you'd like to set up a study, you can send us an email at Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode. Searching the Scriptures has been brought to you by the East End Church of Christ, which means at 3601 Victoria Park Avenue, Suite 200, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Our hours of service are Sunday at 10 a.m. for Bible study and 11 a.m. for morning worship, as well as Wednesday at 7 p.m. for midweek Bible study. If you have any Bible questions that you would like to have answered during this podcast, you may email them to Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. That's Toronto East End Church of Christ at gmail.com. Finally, if you'd like to catch up on any episode that you missed, you will find them at www.eastendchurch.org under the podcast tab found on the main page. I hope you found the few minutes that we spent together today useful in expanding your knowledge of what the Bible teaches. Please join me, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we will be discussing another topic from God's Word. Until you listen again, keep searching the Scriptures to learn what God wants you to do. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.